Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and I'm on the WW or the Weight Watchers Blue Plan for now until the plans change here in just a couple of short weeks. If you haven't seen my video all about the new plans, I will go ahead and link it down below. I will be sharing any additional information when it's received and we'll definitely be doing a video once the new plans are rolled out. So if you're excited for today's meal prep, give this video a big huge thumbs up. And if you're new or you haven't yet subscribed, I would love to have you here. Hit the subscribe button and click the bell next to it so you never miss a single video. We do meal preps every single Monday. Check out the description box down below where you're going to find my three recipe eBooks. The fourth and final is coming out shortly. Make sure you have the other three to complete your collection of four recipe ebooks. They contain points for all plans as well as calories. Links, discounts to all my favorite things as well as nutrition coaching where I offer personalized calories and macros highly recommend as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching if you want to talk with me directly. And don't forget to head on over, join us on Facebook. That's where you can keep up with me day to day. So let's go ahead and jump in to this week's meal prep. this week I am making egg cups. I really want to up my breakfast protein game and I think these egg cups are going to be a great way to do that. Plus they should be absolutely incredible. They make a great meal prep. They are portable. They're easy to warm up. So I'm pretty excited. Let me show you what's in our recipe. First you're going to need salt and pepper. I'm using almond milk. You could use low fat milk, whole milk, whatever you have on hand. You're going to need lots and lots of eggs. I have some pre-cooked center cup bacon and bacon bits kind of mixed together together from a previous recipe. So I'm going to use those, but you will need some center cut bacon, garlic powder, and the original recipe calls for ground mustard, which I don't have. So I'm just going to omit that. You're also going to need mozzarella cheese, Parmesan cheese, and I'm going to do bell pepper. Again, the recipe called for broccoli. I don't have any broccoli and I need to use these bell peppers up. So I'm going to use those. You can really substitute any of the ingredients to make the egg cups special to you. So let's get into the recipe. So to get started on our egg cups, you're going to need a good size bowl. This is about a medium size bowl. We are going to crack 10 eggs. Now we're going to add in our salt and pepper. and our garlic powder, and this is also where you would add in the mustard powder. And one quarter cup of milk, again, I just used almond milk, and then whisk that together until combined. Now we're going to add in three quarters of a cup of light mozzarella, the five pieces of center cut bacon, and we want about a cup and a half of broccoli pepper, so I'm just going to add what I have left here in my bowl. Again, I need to use these up, and then again, whisk together until those have been incorporated with the eggs. I'm going to spray my muffin pan with some nonstick cooking spray. Using my ice cream or cookie scoop, I will link these down below. It's just a three pack on Amazon. I'm going to fill each of the muffin cups about three quarters of the way full. Our goal is to get 12 egg cups total. So once you have your egg cups filled, you're going to top each one with a little bit of Parmesan cheese. This is a quarter of a cup total. You can see that mine are very full. I wanted to use all of the egg mixture. They're probably going to overfill the muffin cups when they cook, but that's just fine. I wanted to, again, use it all. I want to get as much as I can. I want as much protein and goodness as I can get. So this is going in a 375 degree oven for about 15 to 17 minutes or until they're cooked all the way through. We just don't want them to be all jiggly. That's how we'll know that the eggs are cooked through. So 
Mm. As suspected, they don't look the prettiest, but what I'm going to do is just kind of cut around each of the egg cups. They smell incredible. I mean, they look really good. We're just going to get a little added bonus with our egg cups this week. So let me get these out of the pan and then we'll go over points and calories. So here are the egg cups. I just kind of cut off some of the extra egg around the edges. These are going to be so good for breakfast. So each egg cup is only one point on blue and purple and three points on the green plan. They are 99 calories a piece. So my plan is, is to probably have two of the egg cups for breakfast along with some fruit. And I think that's going to be so perfect. Again, they make a great meal prep. They're portable and you can't beat bacon, cheese and eggs for breakfast. For my lunch this week, I'm making spinach and feta meatballs. I'm really excited for this. I love meatballs. They make such a great, easy meal prep. They last for the solid week in the fridge. They're easy to take with you. I'm really excited for these. So let me show you what's in our recipe. First, you're going to need a pound of extra, extra lean ground turkey, some feta cheese. I'm just going to be using regular full fat feta. If you want to look at reducing the points, you could use a fat free or low fat feta. You'll just have to recalculate the points but I'm going with the real feta. There's not a ton in this recipe and I really want that yummy feta flavor. You'll also need some chicken stock, garlic, powder, and dill, salt, pepper, and one egg, Italian style breadcrumbs, oil, I just have some avocado oil here, and some spinach. So the first thing I did, I added a tablespoon of avocado oil to a large skillet and then I'm going to put in about two cups worth of spinach. And we're going to let this saute down and wilt down really well before we put together the meatballs. So for our meatballs, I've added my one pound of extra, extra lean ground turkey to a medium sized bowl. I'm going to add half of a cup of Italian breadcrumbs, half of a cup of feta cheese, about a half of a teaspoon of garlic powder, half of a teaspoon of dried dill, and then salt and pepper. And then with my spoon, I'm going to give it a quick mix. I'm not mixing it thoroughly together because we still need to add in our spinach. Once your spinach has cooled, we're going to add that in and then mix up the rest of the meatball mix but with our hands. It just makes it a lot easier to get everything mixed together. So I'm going to cook my spinach and feta turkey meatballs in the Instant Pot. You could do this on the stovetop, in the oven, whatever your preference is. So I'm going to take a spoon here and scoop up some of the meatball mixture, form it into a meatball, and then I did spray my Instant Pot with some nonstick cooking spray and repeat until we have all of our turkey meatballs. It doesn't matter how many you get, we can base the serving size and points on the end result of meatballs. So don't be worried about getting a serving number just roll them out into as equal as possible sized meatballs okay we're going to set our instant pot to saute and we're going to allow the meatballs to brown we're going to turn them and flip them throughout the browning process We have all this yummy, brown, crusty goodness on the bottom of our Instant Pot. So I'm adding one cup of chicken broth. And then with this spatula thing, I'm gonna kind of scrape all of those brown bits off the bottom. That's really going to add some extra yummy flavor to our meatballs. Now I'm going to add back in my meatballs and then we're going to allow the finish cooking all the way through by putting on the lid and setting the Instant Pot timer. We're gonna set this 
to six minutes total and allow it to pressure cook. Once your Instant Pot time goes off, we are going to allow it to release naturally for about five to seven minutes. Once that time has elapsed, we'll go ahead and turn this to vent and allow any additional steam and pressure to release. Once you've manually released whatever pressure is left, we're gonna go ahead and remove the lid. Oh my God, these meatballs smell so delicious. So what we're going to do is just transfer them in to a storage container. They're falling apart. They are that juicy. I'm really excited for these. So here are the turkey, spinach, and feta meatballs. I had to try a little piece. These are so good. They are very juicy, very tender. I think cooking them in the Instant Pot, if you have one, is really smart because the cooking process just keeps all the moisture. So again, it doesn't matter how many meatballs you have. What you're going to do is take the number of meatballs that you ended up with and divide that by four because this entire batch is only four servings. Per serving, it is three points on the blue and purple plan, four points on the green plan, 269 calories. So based on my meatballs, I have four or five meatballs per serving, which is a fantastic amount. You can pair this with the starch of your choice, some extra vegetables, fruit, whatever you'd prefer, but I'm excited to have these for the entire next week. Sweet treat this week, we are making copycat Starbucks pumpkin scones with the frosting, with all the goodness. Wait until you hear the points and calories, you're going to be shocked. So let me show you what's in our copycat Starbucks pumpkin scone recipe. First you're going to need vanilla extract, pumpkin pie spice, baking powder, one egg, half and half, brown sugar substitute of your choice. As always, I'm using Lakanto Golden. I am also using the Lakanto powdered sugar and I have the granulated. I will link Lakanto down below with 15% off for you. That way you can save some money, get your favorite sugar alternatives, and Lakanto is the best out there. You're also going to need some canned pumpkin, light butter, and some all-purpose flour. I thought I was recording and I wasn't. So what I added to my medium-sized bowl was half of a cup of pumpkin puree, half of a cup of half and half, which is all over my board. And then we're going to add one egg and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then with a fork, we're just going to whisk that together. We just wanna make sure all of it gets mixed well. Go ahead and set your pumpkin mixture aside. Now in a much larger bowl, we're going to add two cups of flour, one third of a cup of the brown sugar substitute, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. This is a one teaspoon, so we're going to do one and a half. It calls for two teaspoons of pumpkin pie, but as usual, I'm going to put in quite a bit more than that, about a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half. And then we're going to add just a pinch of salt. I'm going to mix the dry ingredients together. Then we're going to add in the half of a cup of cold light butter. And using the fork of your spoon or whatever, if you have a pastry cutter, that would probably be even better. We're just going to cut this butter into the dry ingredients until it's crumbly. Now we're going to take our dry ingredients and we're going to push it up along the side, creating a hole or a well in the middle. We're then going to add that pumpkin mixture right to the middle into that well. And then we're going to mix everything together. Do not over mix, just gently mix until it is fully combined. I'm going to lightly flour my working surface. So I did put some saran wrap down on my board just to prevent it from getting super duper messy. And then we're going to add the scone mixture to the floured surface. And then we're just going to roll it around the floured surface until we have a nice ball of dough. And it is pretty sticky, so I would definitely, definitely flour your working surface. We're going to add the dough to a parchment lined baking sheet. And then we're going to spread it out. We want to create 
somewhat resembling a square. It doesn't really matter the size. You, you want it about one inch thick. We're going to cut this into eight scones. And then I'm going to separate these on the parchment paper a couple of inches apart from each other so that they can cook and bake. I'm going to put the scones into a 400 degree oven for about 13 to 16 minutes until they're cooked through and they're nice and golden brown. While the scones are in the oven, we're going to make a couple of different glazes. We want a white glaze and a pumpkin glaze, just like Starbucks, where we drizzle a little white over the top of our scone, a little pumpkin over the top of our scone. So for the white glaze, I have one cup of the Lakanto powdered sugar. We're going to add two to three tablespoons of half and half. It just depends on how much we need for the right consistency of glaze. So I'm going to start with two tablespoons. And remember, you can always add more, but you can't take away. And we don't want our glaze to be too thin. So I think two tablespoons looks just about perfect. So go ahead and mix that together until you have a nice, pretty white glaze. So here is what that white glaze looks like. That's absolutely perfect. For the orange glaze or the pumpkin glaze, I have three quarters of a cup of Lakanto powdered. I'm going to add in about a tablespoon of pumpkin puree. I'm going to add in some pumpkin pie spice. The recipe calls for one and a half teaspoons, but I'm just going to add quite a bit into that. And then again, we want one to two tablespoons of half and half. This time I'm starting with one because the pumpkin itself is a little bit wet and I just want to make sure that my glaze isn't too thin. So stir all of that together. Ooh, this is a gorgeous fall color. See, and that looks pretty good. I don't know that we're gonna need a second tablespoon of half and half in this one. This one actually looks just about perfect. So be really careful with the glazes, especially because we added in that pumpkin puree, which again is a little bit on the wet side. So this looks perfect, and that is the pumpkin glaze. I just pulled the scones out. My goodness, do these smell incredible. They need to cool completely. So I'm actually going to remove the parchment off of the baking pan and just set it here on my counter, allow these to cool completely, and then we will glaze them up. Once your scones are cooled, we're going to drizzle over our glaze. I'm going to start with the white glaze and just kind of put that over the top. And then we're going to drizzle the pumpkin glaze on top as well. So here are the completed Starbucks pumpkin scones. These look so good. You guys, these are huge scones. We added a little pumpkin to the mix to bring up the vibe. Let's go over points and calories like I mentioned in the beginning you're going to be absolutely stunned. So each scone is only five points on all plans, 173 calories. That is it, you guys, for a copycat Starbucks scone. So you can see the texture of these is very, very similar to Starbucks. They're very soft, very moist. I'm so excited for these. Five points, 173 calories. Thank you for joining me for another WW meal prep. I hope you are as excited about these three recipes as I am. I can't wait to have these meals all week long. All three recipes are on my website. That will be linked at the top of the description box, along with the three recipe eBooks, nutrition coaching, links, discounts to all my favorite things, as well as my Facebook group. Don't forget to head on over and join us there so you can be up to date with me. I'm on there every single day. So it's the best way to kind of keep up with me. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and if you're gonna recreate these recipes. And don't forget to subscribe. I would love to have you here. Happy Monday friends. Have the best Monday ever and I'll see you in Wednesday's What I Eat in a Day. Bye!